Hey everybody, Danny Maud here. Thanks for joining us. If you're a senior golfer, how often do you see the guys on television, the big Bryson DeChambeau smashing it a mile and think, there's no way you can do that. You've got back issues, you've got knee issues. It's crazy and the world of golf focuses so much on all these athletic motions and you probably find that actually you cannot relate. Well, this week I brought in Pierce and Andy who are gonna show you exactly how you can overcome some of these kind of ailments so you don't break your body and generate a lot of power. Now stay tuned to the end of the video because we've got some two fantastic giveaways. So Andy, Piers, over to you. Thanks for there having us. Yeah, nice to great see you. Yeah. Right, we're gonna show you really three ways that we can improve some, some yardage off the tee. Piers, yep. you might even get some benefit from I this as well. So. <laughs> so let's go for the first one. We wanna show the guys at home how we can improve some club head speed yes. without breaking the body as what yes. Danny said. So let's just go through this one. I think, us. look, we, we know that if we wanna get distance that we need to create this big arc in the backswing. And that's just a simple fact which is there. But as Danny says, how can we do this and allow our bodies, because we're all not getting any younger, but we want to make sure that we can free up our body to do so. I think, there's, Danny, there's been so much now, you'd have seen a lot of content over the last 20, 30 years, yeah. people talking about you've got to have stability in Absolutely. your golf swing and you've got to have these certain positions. We don't really buy into that so much. Let's create some freedom and some movement in the, in the body. So what we would like to look at is, well, how can we get you to get a good turn, a big turn, and also get the weight into that trail side. So there's a few things that you can do in your setup to start with, but then some key thoughts in the swing. So let's start with the setup first of all. So this right foot. Now all of us, including me, will tend to get a right hip, which is tight at some point in your life. So it's very, um, it's much more beneficial to create the right foot flared out like so, so it creates more of an opening of the hip. So if you've got your right foot and pointed it that way, your hip isn't moving. By flaring it out to the right away from the target, it opens the hip out. From there, you can even pull the foot back as well, almost starting the hip turn early. And again, that creates that turn. You can see already, guys, I'm getting Absolutely. a much bigger turn in my backswing. Now, a couple of other things. When I'm moving like this as well, you can see I'm encouraging my left knee to move in behind the golf ball. This again allows me to get more turn. You can see my right leg. This is the one thing that we hate seeing. You must keep your right leg flexed, must keep your right leg flexed. Well, Brooks Kepka might be able to do that, but I think the majority of us, let's allow that right leg to straighten a little bit. Again, look how much turn I've got. And then the last thing we can look at is that lead heel. If the lead heel comes up, again, I just feel like I'm moving more every element Absolutely. that I put into this backswing and it allows for a bigger turn. Do you know what? One really interesting thing here, we all hear this as golf coaches, that golfers are trying to be still. Don't move the head. Yep. <laughs> Let's stay still. Yeah. Let's see if I can get back to this position. We want movement. We want to be able to actually move the body because movement is what's going to create this club head speed that Absolutely. we need. Absolutely. So how do they, I mean, there's obviously some of the guys out there are going to be kind of concerned about this movement. Is it going to affect my ball striking? You know, is it going to affect how straight I hit it? How do they, how do they deal with that? So, so I would say, is it going to affect your ball striking? to start with yes same with any change Absolutely. it's going to create a difference which you've got to get used to so it can affect your ball striking to start with can it affect your direction to start with as well well yes i think it can but i think you need to add up what's most important to you because generally when we see senior golfers they're pretty straight Absolutely. you play golf yeah. with these guys and then suddenly it's like oh another fairway another fairway <laughs> yeah. You know, adding another 10 or 15 yards would be crucial for you. So I think, yes, understand it could affect your strike and your direction to start with, but if you practice it and you get used to it, you can definitely create some more speed. And one thing that I think we need to stress here is, because I'm thinking about getting a big turn, I think the biggest problem is there from golfers, they think they've got to now hit it hard. Yes. The bigger turn does the hard hitting for you. So you haven't actually got to feel, feel like you're getting any more effort into the shot. Just create a bigger turn and suddenly it goes further. And on, and on that same note, you're going to actually protect your body. You're, not, you're going to finish around a golf. You probably found it. You finish around a golf with loads of aches and pains. Yes. But now, obviously, if, you, if you've opened that uh, right foot out or yeah. trail foot, you're opening your hip, you're now actually protecting your body. You're not Absolutely. putting that twist that you see with a lot of the, the tour players. Yes. You know, so. And I think when you do this drill, we're going to do a drill in the moment. When, we, when you have a go at this, you're really going to feel how much or how little stress there is on the body. It really opens everything out and really creates some freedom in the golf swing that you probably haven't felt before. And, and I think, will it affect your strike and direction? Yes, in a positive way. Hopefully, that's what we're, that's what we're looking to do as well. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So you go got for the drill then, Pierce. That spider off your nose there. There's a spider hanging yeah, off his cap there. I was doing well to keep it together there. <laughs> so here's a great drill. And like Andy said, let's just understand how your body feels when you're doing this. So get up now, stand up and, and do this yourself. So hands and arms across your shoulders. Now we're going to ask you to keep your knees perfectly still as you do a turn. 
Now you may do well to move just to here, but when you do this, you're very restricted. Now I can feel my back yeah. pulling already. So I can feel there's a strain being created in my back because of no hip turn. As soon as I allow this leg to move and maybe the lead heel coming up, there's no tension there. You can tell by my voice, there's just no tension at all. But what I am doing is I'm just giving myself chance to create more club head speed, which is gonna be better for you without having to put the effort I in. I noticed there as well, Piers, what you did to kind of make that easy, you actually drew the back right foot back as well, yeah. didn't you? What yeah, you just drawing your back, flaring it open. Yeah. I think anything like this is really good. I think, you know, we get obsessed with, you must create open hips at impact to get yeah. power. You know what, you need a big turn. Yeah, you absolutely. need a big turn. So I'm. The self as Andy, and I'm sure you, you as well, Danny, is let's just get a big turn so we can actually get some clubhead speed. And so you're storing that energy, aren't you, as well? You are. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, look, should I hit a shot doing this? I think yeah, so. Yeah, let's you step guys back, are safe there. Come, case, on, come back yeah, here. Step come back, back over here. <laughs> Name a bit further I've right as well. I've seen him hit a lot of shots as well, Danny. <laughs> well, we're warm, always go straight. We're warm with shots. We're actually quite powerful, but they weren't very straight, so I'm not sure how straight this one will be. <laughs> but what I'm going to do, let's just go through all of them. So, I'm going to bring the right foot back, I'm going to flare it open. I'm going to allow the right leg to straighten and the left knee to come in with the left heel coming up. It sounds like a lot of things, but once you've practiced this a few times, it's actually quite natural. And the feeling is great, but I'm not actually going to hit this super hard and show you that it still gives me some good distance. That wasn't even the best of strikes, it was a little bit out the heel, but I felt like I was, that was effortless. It's still in the air. It's still in the middle of the fairway. And it's in the middle of the fairway as well. Modern day technology, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that effortless power that everybody says, well, I want some effortless power. You create that freedom in the backswing, that's certainly going to help. Absolutely. So, Pierre, so we, we've learned how to kind of store energy in the backswing. Yes. What's the second thing that they could potentially do to generate a bit more well, speed? Well, I'll let you start on this one. Well, look, the, the next thing really is launch and spin. How the ball's launching off the club face and how the ball is spinning, we know if we can get the optimum based on our speed, then that's going to have a huge impact on the distance. And the first component piece is attack angle. Yeah. Real key for certainly the senior golfers who need that little bit extra carry. Yeah, look, we know now through launch monitor data, through science, that if you hit up on the golf ball, you are going to hit the golf ball further. And if you're on a low swing speed, around about 80 miles per hour, which a lot of senior golfers are, then that's going to be ideal that you do hit up on the golf ball. And you can actually change, if you're two degrees down, for instance, and then suddenly you go to two degrees up, we're seeing like 30 yards difference. I think you've got a story on this as well, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Recently? So we managed to kind of add um, 30 yards to a recent seniors uh, game where he, we actually dropped his club at speed by a mile an hour <laughs> and literally just by changing the angle he was approaching the golf ball with no extra effort, he was able to generate so much more yardage, again, without breaking his body. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. the key thing is when you do this, you'll see the initial launch of the golf ball be completely different. It's actually in the air for a lot longer. It's launching high, carrying further, and then still coming down and rolling, which is yeah. what you want as well. well one, of, one of the questions I often get asked is, is why, you know, people are often saying they hit the ball too high. So, you know, what is, what's the misconception with this? When people think they're hitting up on the ball, sure, if it goes high, yeah. it's not going to go as far. Well, it depends on what's happening when you're hitting up on the golf ball. If you're hitting up on the golf ball and you're optimizing your spin, which we're going to talk about in a moment, then you're going to be okay. It's like a Rory McIlroy, who's sort of yeah. not hitting it miles up in Launch the air. It. But if you're someone, and we'll talk about this in the third segment a little bit, if you're hitting up on it and you're adding a lot of loft, then you could be losing distance. But we'll definitely get to that in the third tip. But I think, you know, something else we were speaking about, Danny, as well, some of your uh, subscribers were talking about hitting down on the golf ball. Maybe it's not a, a good idea because the pros do it. A lot yeah. of pros actually hit down the golf ball. Well, here's the thing. They swing it at 150 miles per hour, so they can afford to hit down on it. Sergio Garcia hits down a lot with his driver because he wants to control it and hit the fairway. He still hits it 300 yards plus. Yeah. If he hits he up on it, he'd be even longer. Absolutely. He doesn't need the extra distance. He doesn't need the extra distance. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we've got a drill, haven't we, for the we guys have. at home to have a go. This is a really simple one. You need a golf ball box, and you're going to place this. I'll let you measure it out there, yep. Pierce. Roughly a grip length in Absolutely. front of the golf ball. Yeah. And we love things like this because it really sort of forces you to create a move pierce, doesn't it? It does. So again, what we're trying to do when we hit this golf shot is we want to make sure that we hit the ball and obviously miss the box. So it's not a trick shot. We're not trying to get two you or three shots, uh, golf balls down the fairway. We want to hit the ball and miss that box. Now, the first thing you have to do, if you're teeing it low, the intention will probably be to hit more downward. So that's not going to work. So you need to tee it high. So you tee the ball high. You put the ball forward in your stance, maybe inside the lead heel. This is a little drill that we like to do where we leave the left foot here and then we move the right foot back. And you can put in some of the other components that we did as well. But the objective from here now is when I'm hitting this, that I want to hit the golf ball, as we said, and then miss the golf ball box on the way up. 
Okay, Perfect. Well, let's put him to let's the test. It's an interesting one at the driving range doing this, isn't it? It could cost you a, a bit of money at the driving <laughs> range if you get it wrong. Okay. The great thing about this is all the stuff that we did in the first sort of segment, getting this good turn really helps you do this as well, getting you behind the golf ball to really launch it. And I think you can start slow on this. You can literally chip drives to start yeah, with absolutely. if you don't just feel so comfortable. Yeah, just to get yeah. a feel for it. It's always good to do that. Again, there's that technology creating that high draw for me. I lost that pace, it must have gone. It's high, it's long. long. <laughs> it's a little bit drawery, but it's high and long. It's just like Rory McIlroy, so wasn't it? How do you cut with the, so I know some of the guys out there are gonna be asking, they've tried high tee. Yes. How do they stop skying? Because sometimes they, they, they have a high tee and the ball goes straight up in the air. What are they doing? So generally what would happen then is, if you look, actually look at both cameras here. So if you are teeing it high and you're hitting it high, you're skying it, hit on the top of the club, check the ball position. So yep. sometimes the ball position doesn't get forward enough. But then if that is still happening, then there may be an issue with their body being too far forward like so, creating a steep angle. Or even from here, moving and getting their body steep so, into the shot. So the high shot isn't coming from them hitting too up on the ball, is it? It's actually no. coming from hitting too down on the ball. Down on the ball, Just hitting yeah. on the top of the club there Absolutely, and leaving a yeah. lovely little mark on the top. But yeah. if you look back at the slow-mo that we did here, you can see that my body was well behind the golf ball when I was hitting it. So the chances of me skying it, I don't think I've ever skied a shot, actually. <laughs> I can assure you he has. <laughs> no. But that's a great point because this brings us now on to the next component which influences yeah. launch and spin, which is strike, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. So let's just have a look at this here. So when we're talking about strike as well, we're talking about the vertical strike, so the up and down nature of the strike. So if you hit the golf ball on the bottom of the golf club, what's going to happen is it's going to launch low, but it's going to have a lot of spin on it because of what we call gear effect, and it just throws the ball up in the air. Sometimes that used to look good. You yeah. know, remember Sandy Lyle hitting these shots that were starting low and rising, but you're losing a lot of distance by doing that. So hitting it low on the face is not a good idea. So tee the ball up higher. There's the tip for that one. But if you hit the golf ball high on the face, what's going to happen is it's going to launch higher, but it's going to have less spin. So we would definitely prefer that for a senior golfer, hitting it higher on the face. And to be honest, if we had an ideal place for you to miss hit the middle, because the middle's where we want to get, but if you were to miss it from middle, high toe is great, because it launches high with not a lot of spin, and it has a little bit of draw on it as well. So, testing. You have to test. Okay. The only way, um, Danny, I know you've done this. I've seen you do this before. Numerous times. Oh, hello. <laughs> what you need is, you need some strike spray, or you need some athlete's foot spray, whatever it is. Actually, we got, so what did we get from a jock itch spray when we were in America? That was <laughs> nice. quite amusing. Just make sure, there we go, there we go. Needed a bit of a shake. So it just leaves a residue on there and then you hit some shots and you just get some feedback. Yep. And Great. you're gonna ask me to hit one, aren't you? We're gonna ask Absolutely. you to hit one. That last one that came so far out the toe. <laughs> Okay. And I think the majority of golfers don't even think about doing this, but it's so valuable. If you can actually just measure your strikes, see where your patterns are. If you've got it too low on the face, then you're losing distance. So then tee the golf ball up and experiment so you can actually create some awareness and some improvement in that strike, because it makes a huge difference. You're struggling there, Piers. I think I've got the wrong one this morning. <laughs> I think that one's pretty much empty. Okay, so there's plenty on there. Just yeah. put plenty on the toe, Piers. You'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. Fine. So I'm going to do the golf ball box drill again as well. I'm actually going to combine a little bit of the turning of the foot. So I'm going to get the body moving a little bit more on this one. So I'm going for the distance and hopefully no, I can get a strike. Back, what are you stepping back over there for, guys? Come on! <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, that's the best shot. That is launched. Yeah, that was definitely higher flight, Pierce. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because you can tell I was obviously getting behind the golf ball because if we actually look at the strike, it could have been better. We had a little bit of fade on it, which means it came out the heel. But you can see that was actually a little bit low down in the face. I definitely would have preferred to that be a little bit higher. If I could have get that and just move it to there, it probably would have gone another 10 yards further. So Wendy, third and final thing, how do these guys generate more speed? Okay, well, the, the last thing we're talking about is loft. Loft is a key component. And what we would say with this is go and get a fitting. It's amazing if you have a club fitting, you can gain yards without changing anything. Just getting the right equipment and the right loft to suit you. But the next thing we're going to talk about, Pierce, that influences this, yep. is the release. The release. Okay, so let's tell you what we say the release is. I think it's the same as you, Danny. It's that when you're swinging down, it's the toe closing over the heel. So we can see the toe closing over the heel. This is great for creating a good loft when you're striking the golf ball, but it's also great for speed as well. You'll generally find the Jim Furyk, the guys who hit it really straight, have a quite passive release, whereas you see someone like Tiger Woods has an active release, or Ernie Els, whoever you want to say. Greg Norman was a great example of someone who would release the club a lot through the hitting area. And I think what we generally see, Danny, you will have seen this as well, 
that a lot of golfers, including senior golfers, will move through the golf ball kind of like this. So they are, the arms are splayed and the loft keeps pointing towards the target and they see this chicken, chicken wing. wing. How yeah, do we get absolutely. rid of a chicken ring? Yeah, yeah. Chicken wing or ring, both maybe. <laughs> but what you can do to get rid of the chicken wing is just work at the release. Get the toe turning over the heel. It really does help for speed. So the drill we like to give for this is actually one we call laser butt. So if you look at anybody who releases the club really well, don't worry guys, I'm not hitting yet. <laughs> Anyone who hits the golf ball, he's safe, here, don't he's worry. safe there, absolutely. <laughs> If you see someone who's very good at releasing the club, when they get to this part of their golf swing, so when the club shaft is parallel to the ground, the butt of the club is pointing at the target. We call it laser butt, because if we're imagining a laser's coming out the butt of the club, it points towards the target. If we look at the chicken wing or the, the swing straight yeah. uh, guy or girl, you know, we'll often see that the finish kind of looks a little bit like this. That's great for playing a fade and losing distance, but yeah. we don't want to do that. We're watching this video to get distance. <laughs> so you can literally hit shots doing this, softer shots. You know, I'm probably going to hit one in a minute with my feet together. And it's amazing. We've got golfers hit the golf ball as far with their feet together yep. just because they're releasing it better. Okay. Can we have a look? I'll have a go, yeah, absolutely. Definitely standing back on this yeah, one. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wind's you really picking are. up a little got bit. Loads of confidence in you. Great for playing a draw as well, by the way. So there's a low draw. I mean, that's going to be pitching around about 180, but it's going to be running another 40 or 50 yards, yep. which again is a really important component by closing the face and releasing it. And I think if you could add 30 yards of run to your drives, it's a massive benefit. Absolutely. Massive benefit. On that note, we have a credible giveaway for you. So we said how important driver is. Well, we're going to give away one lucky winner, a custom fitted Callaway dri driver on this channel. If you like, subscribe and comment on this video. Plus, if you head over, over to me and my golf, they are going to give away a tailor-made tailor -made sim. sim. Yes, a beautiful tailor-made sim. All you need these. to do is like, comment and subscribe to our channel too. too. And good luck, by the way. These are great drivers. Absolutely. So. Piers, just in summary, just yes. can you summarise for the guys um, what they need to kind of go away and work on? Yeah, so there's three main things we want to look at. Look, create a big turn. Find a way around this. How can you create this big turn? Secondly, make sure you hit up on the golf ball and be mindful of your strike. And then the third thing is make sure you release it. Seriously, you could stand there with your feet together and just make sure you release it and you hit driver further than you have done before. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on the channel, guys. Thank Danny. you so much. Thanks so much for watching. So remember, give away on both our channels, like, comment, and subscribe. Until next week, have a great golfing week.